In this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between a bent knee and a straight knee forward fold. In yoga, we would call this Uttanasana, but if you're just trying to stretch your hamstrings uh, and touch your toes and increase your flexibility, a lot of people just do this, whether it's yoga or not. We'll talk about bent knees versus straight knees and why you might want to do one versus the other in today's episode. Let's check it out. Hey, real quick, before we get started, if you haven't been here before, my name is Anthony Davis. This is Shapeshift Wellness, where we explore the science of fitness, yoga, and meditation. If you like that sort of thing, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you get updates on new content, um, on the science of your human body. It's amazing stuff. We want to learn about it. It enhances your life, I hope. So hit subscribe, share it with your friends. Now let's learn about uh, the hamstrings, flexibility, and knees, and backs, and things like that in a forward fold in today's episode. Let's check it out. Okay, so here I have very crudely drawn a side view of two people doing a forward fold, trying to touch their toes. And if you can't imagine that, well, here are their shoulders essentially, and here we go. So they're trying to touch their toes. Here we go, they're trying to touch their toes. Okay, so you can see that I have drawn the hamstrings muscles on the back side here. So you can see, boom, hamstrings, hamstrings, right? Now, if we think about a straight knee forward fold, what we are going to find is that that puts a maximum strain on the hamstrings. So as a result of that, because the hamstrings connect to the pelvis, let's draw the pelvis. So the pelvis is going to be here and more or less it's we're going to be represented by a triangle. Now, if the hamstrings connect to this point, on the triangle, then the triangle is essentially prevented from rotating forward um, if you try to fold forward. So what happens is that as you try to fold forward, if you have straight knees, then the hamstrings are pulling the pelvis in this direction and therefore the pelvis is prevented from tipping forward or an anterior tilt. As a result, the back itself, the spine has to uh, really be lengthened. So the spine has to really stretch maximally. Um, so we have this just a lot of tension in the spine. We have maximal flexion of the spine because the pelvis is being pulled backwards by the hamstrings because of the straight knees, which are pulling the hamstrings uh, down here. If we contrast that with a bent knee forward fold, then let's draw the pelvis here. So now, because the um, hamstrings are relaxed, so I tried to draw that by saying, you know, the wavy lines. So the hamstrings are relaxed, so now they are essentially allowed to shorten a bit. Now the hamstrings are a little bit shorter, and as a result, it allows the pelvis to tip forward or tip anterior. So if the pelvis can rock anterior, right, then the spine doesn't have to be as rounded and the spine can be more relaxed. So you're getting more of your movement. Either In either case, you end up touching the floor. So in either case, we get to our, um, you know, touching the floor position. Let's just pretend for this individual, they get to the floor either way. But with bent knees, you can see that the spine is more relaxed and you get tons of hip flexion from the pelvis tipping forward. Whereas with bent knees, because it pulls the hamstrings, again, let me just demonstrate this for you, because with straight knees, it pulls the hamstrings this way, and that therefore pulls the pelvis around posteriorly, it prevents forward rotation or anterior rotation of the pelvis, then the back has to do all of the stretching. Now, neither of these is necessarily good or bad all of the time. 
In clinic the other day, I intentionally uh, used a straight need forward fold to test a person's uh, spinal mobility and sensitivity. Now, if you are not a clinician, uh, or if you are not, a, an, you know, in some sort of learning setting where you can act uh, alongside a clinician um, in a in a licensed fashion, then you should not be intentionally trying to provoke somebody's pain. But Clinically, it was actually very useful because what we found was for this individual, we we took out, we straightened the knees so that we were able to test how much true spinal flexion they had. So by straightening the knees and sliding the hands down the shins to that person's tolerance, we found that they were able to get their hands below their knees, but about halfway down their shins before they started to experience discomfort. Now that allows us to make progress uh, because I've taken out the hamstrings and the forward tilt of the pelvis. Now we're strictly looking at spinal mobility, right? So that was useful for me in clinic to do that. Now, if, it, if even in a non-clinical setting, if you have a person who does not have any pain, they don't have any kind of dysfunction, and you're not concerned about you know clinical stuff, then if we're just looking at mobility and you are trying to improve spinal mobility, then keeping the legs straight is a good way to objectively measure outcomes because you can say, well, how far with straight knees can you slide your hands down your shins? And then if we do some training over the course of weeks and months, we revisit that and say, now with straight legs, how far can you slide the hands down the shins? And maybe you can make progress. Yes, there's confounding variables. Yes, the hamstrings could have become more flexible. But ideally in this situation, we're trying to look at more spinal mobility. There are other ways of doing it. But for the general population, what I find is that in bent knees is a better option because so many people tend to have difficulty uh, with forcing their spines into a forward flexed position. So by allowing a relaxed spine, um, by allowing the, the pelvis to tip forward, that rotation of the pelvis and that motion coming from the hip joints spares the back for more people. So I find that it is more comfortable for more people more, mo uh, most of the time. It's not a position that you have to avoid. It's not a um, this is going to kill you kind of thing. It's not, but it is more comfortable for more people most of the time. So I prefer bent knees because it does not forcefully torque um, the, the sacroiliac joint. It doesn't force the spine into extreme ranges of flexion, and it is more comfortable for more people most of the time for this reason. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hey, let me know in the comments, uh, did you enjoy this little sketch show? I know it's a little bit of a crude drawing, but um, I might be able to produce more sort of educational content if we can move through things with simple drawings that illustrate a concept rather than me having to illustrate you know, full in-depth illustrations and pull up a lot of anatomy images and that kind of thing. This might be a quicker way that I can teach you about various subjects because I can just sketch them. Um, so let me know in the comments if you liked this presentation style or if, if this was helpful for your education or if this was not helpful and you would prefer maybe a, a style that I've done in previous videos. Um, so let me know. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. See you next time. Thank you.